I'm not saying everybody's gonna have to do go to the extent that we went through or that we did, but you real you do come to a place when you realize diet is just not enough if you're yeah. like if you are looking or striving for optimal wellness and longevity. Sure. And so if, if your circadian kind of your circadian timing mechanisms in your body are not working properly because of the light that you're exposed to, you're just not gonna be able to ex process food properly. And that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. You guys can eat whatever you want to eat, but at the same time, if you're, you know, if you have these issues going on here from your from your environment, then you might have some digestive problems. You might have some other problems going on that are not related to your food. The other two things that we were mentioning, and again, we won't get into extreme details here. However, we wanted to touch base on this because yeah. the other two things that we want to talk about today is water and something called deuterium. Um, water, we're going to probably be very, in our explanation here, we're probably going to be very basic and it's going to be only water and how it pertains to deuterium specifically within our cells and in the mitochondria. And the reason for that is because Kevin's going to do quite an extensive video on water, which is going to probably be a, a series to itself. So we don't yep. want to spend too much time talking about that today. Yep. So instead, what I'm going to start off with here is I'm going to let Kevin explain what deuterium is and uh, yeah. Okay, so deuterium, really what deuterium is, is something called heavy water. So deuterium, it's, it's something that's normal, it's something that's, you know, supposed to be in our environment, it's always been in our environment, it's not something that, you know, we need to be too concerned about in that regards, but what's happening right now is that we have an overabundance of deuterium in our environment. So really our food supply, our water supply, pretty much everything that we're seeing in nature is really, it has more deuterium content than what is normal. And that goes for our bodies as well. So there seems to be more deuterium accumulating up in our body than what would normally be happening. From our ancestors and is what he means. From our ancestors yes. and you know looking back in time and all these other things. But and this is becoming a problem now because deuterium, what it is, it's an isotope of hydrogen. So it's really involved in uh, in in growth really is what it is. I would say it's also involved in decay processes as well. And I think we're still learning a lot about deuterium and there's still lots to be discovered yet. But an example of that would be, you know, from, uh, from babies, for example. Babies seem to have a little bit more deuterium content within them because they're babies and they're growing and they're growing through growth spurts and all these other things. So it's naturally more, there's more of it naturally within them because of that. So babies have a lot of deuterium because they need to go from being a baby to an adult and then what's supposed to happen is our deuterium is supposed to knock off into our adult ages right. so that it could slow the aging process. But what they're finding yeah. now, science is showing now, is that this is not happening like it used to with our ancestors. Yep, and a lot of it is being built up and up. Like we, we have way too much deuterium within us and this is really becoming a problem that we're now discovering with just about every disease that you can think of. And Really what it's affecting most is, since it's, a, it's an isotope of hydrogen, hydrogen's really involved in um, the mitochondria. So the, in the, within the mitochondria, there's a little nanomotor that just spins, and it basically sucks up hydrogen. And that's what really fuels the process for us to really create energy. So what's happening now, instead of having hydrogen go in and start fueling that nanomotor, it becomes deuterium. It's completely, it, 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 they're two different substances. Because since deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen, it's got an extra neutron, is what they say. So it's got a different kind of atomic kind of makeup to it. So really what it does when it goes into the mitochondria, it kind of gums it up. So that the motor, it kind of, it's almost like gum and glue gets stuck in the motor so it doesn't spin as efficiently anymore. So if that motor doesn't spin efficiently anymore, then you can't produce the energy that you need to run your body. So what we're seeing now is there's way too much deuterium content within us now. And it's really gumming up our mitochondria so that we can't produce energy properly anymore. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of scientists kind of coming up with this now and they're realizing this is a big deal. Yeah. And it's I, really a big deal. I think with the deuterium is um, another thing that Kevin didn't really mention. And again, going back to nutrition. Um, is that we always constantly compare ourselves to our ancestors, which is again something that, you know, again, this is just our, 
idea of it, but we believe yeah. a lot of it has to do with the electrical grid and of course a lot of the pollution that we've created here on the planet too well, has really increased these deuterium levels because if you look at some of the studies that they were saying, it, it's predicted that about 15 to 20,000 years ago, people would have been exposed to like a lot less deuterium than what we are being exposed to today. And of course we're getting, we're also ingesting this deuterium through our food sources as well. Um, and a lot of that yeah. tends to be plant-based foods, which is another reason why I think some people tend to be doing really well with this carnivore diet right now. And I think the reason for that is because it's believed that animal-based products are probably still very low in deuterium, where a lot of plant-based foods have higher amounts of deuterium. Yeah, exactly. And it really seems to be, from what I can see, it's our technology. Our technology is really what's throwing this deuterium ratio out of balance with nature. Right. Really. And you could look at that from, I know from one point of view, we got there, our, our nuclear power. That's what generates all electricity on this planet. So that from, from the nuclear power point of view, you know, heavy water is a, a, a significant component to that. And a lot of that gets flushed away and goes back into the rivers and oceans and all this other stuff. So you can imagine that a lot of this stuff just keeps accumulating and accumulating. We've got our power grid as well, so our, our, the, the way that we get electricity in our home, the electricity in, 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 in a way has an influence to stimulate deuterium in the body as well. And it does this in plants, and it does this in all kinds of things. So really what it, what it comes down to is our technology that we've been allowing to pretty much run our lives, in a way is kind of disrupting nature in a way that it's kind of producing way too, too much deuterium. Yeah. And detaches us even further from nature and yep. another reason why, you know, a lot of people again are not taking this into consideration that, you know, they yep. think it's just what you want to eat and at this point it's not even going to be about that. It's going to be looking for diets that are deuterium depleted at this point yep. too because what science is showing is that in order to, in order for our bodies and our mitochondria to function optimally, you want to be below 130 ppms of deuterium in the body and there are yep. plenty of um, there actually there's even um, a recent place that just opened up in LA right now where it's a deuterium depletion clinic and They're talking about how they're going to they're they're helping women to become fertile again Because they're saying if you have too much deuterium It's hard for you to obviously conceive children if this is a, a factor in autoimmune disease cancers and all these other things And of course again, this is going to drive your nutritional requirements as well because you want to eat things that are lower in deuterium and unfortunately, yeah. a lot of our plant-based foods have, unfortunately, because of the way that we have done our, because of our poor farming practices and our yeah. agricultural practices, we have created more deuterium too. And of course, yeah. if that, wa if our plant-based foods are being watered with deuterium, water that is high in deuterium, which is anything coming from our taps these days, then that's also going to be higher in deuterium as opposed to storm water. And not a lot of uh, farms and stuff are watering their, their crops yeah. with storm water. Storm water would be lower in deuterium. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the only thing that's really, really low in deuterium out there is seafood still. And that's a seafood in the, in the case of shellfish, yeah. things like oysters and stuff, which is why we are really big proponents of eating raw oysters because it is mm -hmm. very low in deuterium. So I think when it comes to diet, really, it's we got to be really we got to be smarter than you know just randomly picking food now. There's so much more that uh, is influencing this, you know. And this is a big one. This is going to be something that really continues on here in the years to come. I think we're just scratching the surface on how deep this goes. Yeah. Because I don't think we really understand to its you know fullness as to why this is really happening. You know, why is there so much deuterium? I think we have an idea about some different things like I just mentioned. Um, you know, like our poor farming practices that we're doing here, our power grid. These are just, I think we're just scratching the surface on this. You know, acid rain, creating all these issues yeah. with the rain. And, and And then of course, right. you know, is taking our water and putting it through all these channels under our cities and stuff like that. We're, we're yeah. going to be talking about water and how detrimental that is and why, you know, water is full of deuterium now too, why you want to be drinking something like structured water or yeah. what they call deuterium depleted water. And yeah. that's because you want to reduce those levels in the body too. Yeah. Um, another thing that we kind of had actually, we were recently watching a documentary. I, I wouldn't say it was a documentary, it was a conference. And they were saying how like, you know, some biblical scriptures actually talked about how people 
The idea and the premise of that is in some of our biblical scriptures, they had actually discovered that people were probably living 10 times as long as we are living today. Even though you constantly hear about how conventional medicine and everything in today's society has made us live longer lives and we are living, um, you know, you know, longer lives and more for longevity and stuff like that, which is actually not true, you know. I think average lifespan for many people is in the, their 80s. But according to some of these biblical scriptures, again, this is just... Um, conjecture. Uh, conjecture, exactly. So the thing is, is the idea is that people used to live anywhere between six and 700 years old. I don't know how that's much a, That's a long shot, but I, I think mean, what, yes. what we're seeing is that deuterium is, could be a key player in just overall aging. Yes. So if your deuterium levels are way higher than they should be, this could really be a contributing factor. So this goes, you know, this goes a little bit deeper as well because when you look at, you know, things like creams and different things that you're putting on your skin, you know, they're mm -hmm. loaded with water and all these different things. What they're finding now is that a lot of these things are high in deuterium as well. Mm -hmm. So you're putting this all over your skin and all these other yeah. things. I mean, we're we're really creating a real mess here in a hurry. You know, yeah. it, it's really. A, an unfortunate thing but the key is we got to really look at ways to tune ourselves back to nature and fix our really environment fix the issues that we've created in our current yeah. environment i think again like this was all supposed to be about diet yeah. but it's so hard for us to just stick to yeah. one specific subject when we're talking about this because again all these things are kind of like an afterthought like diet yeah. is also an afterthought to the body again it's not about we are primarily as the human species use food for one reason and that's to create energy and you need to think that there are multiple ways to create and harvest energy in the body and a lot of that is an environmental factor so if you clean up your environment naturally a lot of these other things will also fall into place for you so again it yep. to me when i'm watching all these videos about these people battling back and forth about carnivores and vegans and stuff it, it honestly at yeah. this point just where I am in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, if you haven't paid attention to your environment, a lot of that stuff is, I don't want to say, I don't want to trash or anything, trash anybody or anything like, but it becomes nonsense because you really need to understand what's driving all of those yeah. factors in your life. Yeah. Um, and then, get smarter. Yeah. And really we need to fix the environment is what we need to do. We need to More fix. More people need to be aware of this. Yes. And you know? I think that's one of the reasons why we wanted to talk about some of this stuff today, yeah. because I think the more, again, I'm not saying we should trash nutrition. Absolutely, we need nutrition, but people need to start thinking about some of these other aspects because in the yeah. sense of whatever's happening happening to us environmentally is really going to affect our food because even in the sense of food in itself, food is not what it was, say, even 50 years ago or prior to the 50, 60, hertz, what is it, 50 to 60 hertz grid or whatever, yeah. right before we yeah. created electricity and the light bulb food has really changed and like what it takes now to grow one piece of fruit or something like that will probably have like 10 times less the nutrition than the tr nutrition now than what it did say 50 or 60 years ago but that, that's so, been a big influence in the deuterium rise too when you look at our technology or at yeah. least our under at least our you know from point of view from electricity you know you got to think back 100 years ago we didn't really have electricity it was in its beginning stages you know the invention of a light bulb all of these things that were starting to rise up is where this, you know, deuterium level was really starting to rise up as well. The more that we started to create all these different technologies. It was very interesting how there's kind of a, seems to be a very linear kind of relationship to that too. So it kind of shows you that a lot of this stuff is unfortunately our doing, you know. We need to take responsibility for it and start looking at ways to, to deal with this. Mm -hmm. I think to kind of summarize this, I think, you know, deuterium is something we all need to pay attention to, especially if you're kind of struggling from a chronic illness. This is something that will really help with just about any any illness that we're, we're dealing with right now. And a lot of doctors and a lot of clinics, this seems to be kind of really the key fundamental thing that they're treating with some of these patients, you know, is deuterium depletion. And they're, yeah. and they're deploying all kinds of different techniques on how we can do this mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about that next year to kind of you know wrap all this up is to you know give you guys some pointers on what we can do naturally to kind of get rid of some of this stuff because there is some stuff that we can do yeah right? which is yeah which is really funny because kevin and i didn't realize for years but a lot of the things that we have taken a lot of the steps um that we have taken and the initiative to change you know our physical environment we didn't realize that this is probably what we were doing and the funny thing there is like i said we've done 
you know, 13 or 14 or 15 kinds of diets and stuff like that. We've tried them all. And it wasn't until we started doing some of these, uh, taking some of these steps to change our physical environment that we started to notice a real, um, that our that our health and our wellness really was all, like I would say optimized and it really started to excel at that point like we got to a place where nutrition can only take us so far and then once we started doing some of this stuff we started to notice considerable differences in our health and wellness and so yeah. I think that's why we really wanted to touch base on this video just because I think there's just too much um, focus on diet in itself and the yeah. kinds of foods people are eating without realizing yeah. what's really in your food and that food isn't what it used to be or that our environment isn't what it used to be. So just kind of go back on that too I think you know from my Lyme disease recovery I think this was a significant thing for me is that deuterium depletion was one of the real reasons why I got well and I just didn't yeah. know I was doing it Yeah. because I started looking at all the different things that you need to do to kind of keep you know your deuterium levels back in balance and in some cases you know reduce your levels I was doing it all so I think that's important to bring up especially for people struggling with Lyme and any other illness it's something yeah. that people really need to pay attention to yeah. no question and I yeah like I said so, before I don't think just eating a healthy diet is gonna get you uh, you know, because I've had a lot of people who have kind of mentioned on various other videos that I have done saying, oh, so you kind of did just this one diet, like this one healing diet, and then you yeah. reversed all your Crohn's disease uh, or your Crohn's colitis and your Lyme disease. And no, it wasn't like that at all. We had yeah. to do a lot of things environmentally in order to really um, take hold of our lives and change our wellness. So what we're going to go through are just some things that we apparently did that we didn't even know that we were doing, but things that seem to work for us and then we later realized and this is we later realized through watching conferences and stuff like that that what we were doing were we were taking different steps to actually reduce our own deuterium in within our bodies. Mm -hmm.